to Dhananjay Hetiarachi on the powers of association. I can still remember the first time I got arrested. I was uh, 18 years old. I was arrested uh, for aggravated assault and battery. Uh, the first time, not the last time, right? The first time. Uh, to tell you, tell you a little, little history about how I got arrested, I need to take you way back uh, to when I was a kid. Um, I grew up near a school, well, in a school by the sea. Um, I learned the ones and twos of being a man in the Mount Lavinia beach. I learned the A's and B's of becoming great by my bigger brothers and fellow brothers uh, of St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia. My brother, who was also in my school, uh, decided one day to uh, leave college and join an international school uh, and because he was not doing too well with the local curriculum. He goes to school on the first day and comes back and tells me, uh, Aya, or brother, a couple of guys came around today and uh, pushed me around and actually bullied me a little bit. And I'm like, don't worry, don't worry. We do that to royalists all the time. <laughs> and I said, yeah, just go back to school and, and, and see how, what happens on the second day. He goes back on the second day, come back, comes back again, now more worried than the first day, and says, look, it happened to me today as well. Now, being an elder brother, I was a little bit concerned, but I told him, look, look, just go one more time. And he goes back on the third day and comes back home with a black eye. Now, <clears throat> I was never good in academics. We all thought academics was for the pretty boys. Um, we were a ragtag bunch of good people. Uh, I had friends by the name of Donga, Makka, Topa, uh, and so you, you can imagine the picture, the, the, you know, the group of the peop people I hanged out with. So I, I, said, I went up to Mecca and I said, Mecca, listen, we need to uh, do a little trip to this other school. A couple of guys are actually bullying my brother. We need to, we need to head over, over there. And yeah, uh, Mecca said, Masa, don't worry about it. Let me get the gang all together and uh, I'll take care of it. So school finishes up. I come out of the main gate and I have about, I only wanted five guys. Now there are 50 people out there. Uh, the swimming team, the rugger team, the cadeting platoon, the whole guys. So what we do, uh, we get a couple of tuk-tuks, put everyone over there, and we cart off to this other school. Until I got there, no one told me it was in front of a police station. <laughs> so we jump out of the, the, the vehicles, bang, assault the gate, some guys jump over the gate, and before you know it, uh, it took the cops 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 10 squad cars surround us. 10 of us got caught, carted away into the remand cell and chucked in. Now, we were a tough bunch. We were not afraid of the cops. But there was one person we were all afraid of. And that was my mother. Raise your hand if you have an emotional mother. Raise your hand. I just want to take a look. Emotional mums? Emotional mums? Yeah, okay. Put them all together, you get my mom. I could hear her screaming outside the police station. Uh, and, and I knew, oh my God, hell has broken loose. She comes to the cage, keeps her hands on the bars, looks at me, tears in her eyes, and says, Son, did I raise you to be this? Now, mothers cry two types of tears. First, are tears of sadness, and two, are tears of shame. Now when a son sees a mother cry tears of shame, that's a life-changing moment for those of you who have experienced it. I looked at my life and I realized I'm not going anywhere. I mean, it didn't help. The very following day, I got uh, my A-level, advanced level results. I didn't get three A's. I didn't get three B's, I didn't get three C's, and I didn't get three S's. <laughs> now, something strange that happens in Sri Lanka is, you know, unless you get into a university, you're like left in the dark. All of my friends got into foreign universities, uh, Leicester, Harvard, Oxford, even Macca got into a university. I'm like, how did you do it? <laughs> 
And here I am, all, left all alone uh, in Sri Lanka. And I start going into a depression. Um, watch TV, go to sleep, watch TV, go to sleep, completely lost. I mean, this situation is faced by kids in Sri Lanka. I mean, unbelievable. My dad walks into the room and says, son, okay, you know, all right, that's all right. You couldn't get into a university, that's fine. Uh, but there is this exam called CIMA, right? And that's Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. Why don't you start doing CIMA? And I'm like, yeah, why not? You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at accounting, though I have never tried it in my life. And I start doing this exam, and the only thing that happened was I lost my hair. I'm going to the classes, sitting the exam failing, sitting the exam failing, sitting the exam failing. You know, now I call it, it's the exam you do when you fail A-levels. So it wasn't working out, I go back into my depression now, you know, and everyone's now getting themselves educated, Dhananja Hetyarachi in the room. My mother walks into the room and says, son, okay, you tried your luck at this professional exam, that's fine, you know, we understand. Um, well, I want to do something as a family. Uh, why don't we do dancing? And I'm like, you know, you know, I'm only used to the big match style dancing, you know, I was, what are we doing? I'm like, okay, yeah, dancing sounds good. So my mom puts me in the car, uh, 4.30 Sunday, normally I sleep at that time. Uh, I was a bit hesitant. Takes me to this dance studio called Rhythm World. And as I entered the door, my mind was blown. I saw people doing the jive, the cha-cha, the samba, the rumba. I was like, wow, I've never seen this before. And in the middle of the dance studio, there was this short girl, very thin, sharp features, pointed chin, shouting out instructions. And that's when I met the first person that would change my life forever, Shiromi Pereira. She comes up to me, looks me dead in the eye and says, Son, I see something in you. But I don't know what it is. If you can come here once a week, maybe, maybe we could find that something. And I'm like, wow, no one has ever told me they see something in me. And now I start dancing. I do the cha-cha, you know, I'm jiving, you know, I'm doing the waltz, the rumba, the tango. Now my life has become dancing. And I had set my mind that I was going to be a professional dancer, ballroom dancer. I even had a card. Dananja Hetyarachi, dancer, will dance for free. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and I, I do this for about eight months and, and now I'm convinced my life is to be a dancer. One day my dad walks into the room again and says, son, we are very proud of you. You managed to stick on to something. I hear that you want to be a dancer. Not exactly the plan I had in mind for you. But that's fine, that's fine. Would you also like to start working? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's great, that's great. I'm thinking my dad is going to uh, pull some connections, get me uh, under a CEO or an MD as a personal assistant. I didn't mind, yeah? Carrying around files, no problem, no problem. Now I'm imagining my boss, six feet tall, dark long hair, six inch skirt, high heels and now man i'm looking forward to meeting my boss i wake up on monday my dad puts me in the car and takes me to number nine Samna place if you guys haven't been to number nine Samna place you need to go to number nine Samna place we pull up at this abandoned house there is moss growing on the walls cobwebs outside my dad asks me to get out i thought he was dropping a parcel off little did i know he was dropping me off I get down from the car, I go in to this hall, very dark. Have you seen those, you know, in, in the old detective movies, you see the lamp coming down from the ceiling and it becomes a triangle. Have you seen those lamps, yeah? You know, a couple of those, um, I, I take a winding road, take a turn to my right, I see an open toilet, an open kitchen, and a thick wood oak door. I open the door, and I see an office room. I was relieved. Inside the office room, I see a bed. Then I see a huge table. And behind the table, 
there is a huge man wearing a banyan, big holes, and the schoolboy shorts we used to wear. You know, the blue color ones, can you remember, guys? Yeah? The bigger version of it. And he smiles, and I realize he doesn't have teeth. My dad is like, Anton, I want you to meet my fellow. This is the fellow I was talking to you about. I want you to make him a man. And I'm like, Dad, please don't leave me here. I shall do anything you want. <laughs> and my dad leaves. And there I was looking at a strange man, looking at me, looking at him with a bed in his office. He looks at me and then says, Son, I see something in you, but I don't know what it is. If you can come here once a week, maybe, maybe we can find that something. And that was my introduction to Anton Samarasinghe, the second person that changed my life forever. All I did for that year was cook for him, clean for him, and wash his car. Every day, 365 days a year. Didn't get paid a single cent. But, at 5 o'clock every evening, he used to lie down on his bed and ask me to sit down. And he used to tell me these amazing stories. Uh, and we used to have this dialogue. And I used to ask him, sir, how do you be successful? How do you fall in love? How do you get a girlfriend? How do you become great? You know, uh, how do you be powerful? How do you discover yourself? And, and we used to have this whole discussion, storytelling. And I still consider that to be my first education. Uh, at the end of the year, Anton comes up to me and says, Son, I've taught you everything I need to teach you. Now it's time for you to go. And I'm like, but sir, I don't want to go. You don't have to pay me. I'll still cook and clean for you. <laughs> and, and I ask him this one question. I ask him, sir, how do you become great? He looks at me and says, Talancha, it's very simple. Just dream about it. Think about it. And live it every single day of your life. Little did I know then that that was the day I got permission to dream. I became a dreamer that day. Now back at home, I'm still pursuing my dream of becoming a dancer. And as usual, who walks into my room? My dad. He comes to me and says, son, we are very proud of you. Not only have you done dancing, now you have managed to stick on to a job for one year. Fantastic. There is this place called Toastmasters. Would you like to go there? And I'm like, I have never heard of this word before. Toastmasters, what is it? And it sounded like a place where you eat. So I was like, okay, fine. I love going there. Let's go. And wearing a rubber slippers, jeans, and a Bart, Tim Bart Simpson t-shirt, I go to the Toastmasters meeting. And I could still remember that day. I was uh, on the hallway, and I saw a plywood door. Little did I know then that once I walked through this door, my life would change in ways that I could have never imagined. Little did I know then that the people in that room would play a part in changing my destiny in ways I could never have imagined. I opened the door and I stepped inside and my world was open to some amazing people. There was uh, speakers on to my left, there were speakers to my right, uh, beautiful people, people with character and stature. And in the middle of it all, there was a very short man, very short man, a very unassuming guy, but there was a strange glow that was coming out of him. Uh, a sort of an alchemist, a wizard of sorts. So I sit there and this guy comes up to me and asks me, son, what's your name? And I said, sir, my name is Dhananja. And he looks me dead in the eye and he says, son, I see something in you. But I don't know what it is. If you can come here once a month, Maybe we could find that something. And that was my introduction to Aruna Salam Balraj, a man that has changed my life so many ways. And I start speaking. I start speaking. And I, and I realize, wow, I just discovered a new talent other than dancing. 
Uh, I can still remember in the Toastmasters club, people kept asking me, what are you doing? I used to pull out my card and say, I'm a dancer, brother. <laughs> and I dance for free. Um, and, and, and now I'm dancing and I'm speaking. Dancing and I'm speaking. And I can still remember in 2006, I took part in my first ever uh, international contest. It was called South Asia's Best Speakers Contest. And I had this speech already. It was called uh, Appeal to the Nation. And there was a fellow competitor who was speaking as well. And she's a very close friend of mine and a fantastic speaker, Maheshi Premasinghe. Amazing. And she was doing a speech on Woody Woodpecker. Appeal to the nation, Woody Woodpecker. I mean, come on. And I'm like, I'm going to win this. I get on stage, I do a thundering speech. And I'm like, wow, man, I've got this in the bag. I step down, go to the pool, do a swim, eat lunch, come back for the award ceremony, fourth place winner, some guy from India. Third place winner, someone from Pakistan. Um, second place winner, someone from India again. First runner-up, another Indian. And I'm thinking, look, Maheshi wasn't that bad. She should have at least got second place. Before I could finish thinking, first place winner, Maheshi Premasing, Woody Woodpecker. You know how in movies, when you're about to faint, your whole world starts to black out? It really happens. Um, you know, I suddenly realized, man, I've wasted my life. Made a fool of myself. Here I am again. No education, no job. Just went up on stage, made a fool of myself. I could remember I was making a beeline to the exit. And during my speech, there was a small place where I did a salute to the armed forces who was fighting the 30-year war in Sri Lanka. And as I walked to the exit, I saw a little girl uh, following me. As the elevator doors closed up, I saw her doing something with her hands and I noticed that she was doing that salute. I could still remember that day and it was, it, it, it made me think that, wow, you know, maybe there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I go back home and I go to sleep completely lost. I wake up in the morning to check my email and back in the day you didn't get a lot of emails. If you're lucky you got one. If you're very lucky you got three forwards. Um, and there was this one email by an address called solutions at slt.net. And I opened that email and there it read, Dear Dhananjay, being a tough man still, I cried listening to your speech. It reminded me of how I led a group of young men just like you into the jungles of Raunia to save our country. I'm so happy that people like you, people like in your generation, remember our sacrifices. And it read at the bottom, the true mark of a champion is to bounce back when you hit rock bottom. And I had hit rock bottom. Six months go by and I get a call from my club president and uh, his name was Leedanath Daluatta. He gives me a call and he says, Dhananja, look, I know you didn't do well in the contest, but there is this international contest called the World Tape Speech Contest happening. I asked him what it is. He said, the best speaker of each club records their tape, sends it to the US and a panel of judges listen to the tapes and picks one winner out of 13,000 people. Would you like to take part? I immediately kept the phone. Um, the very next day, again, Mr. Balraj gives me a call and he says, Dhananja, I want you to take part, take part for me. And I'm like, okay, all right, sir, I'll take part for you. So I put my 110%, I record my speech, Leelanath Daluatta posts the speech to the USA by his own money. Three months go by, I get a call Saturday morning, 7.30, Dhananja, are you up? I said, Leelanath, I'm obviously not up at 7.30 in the morning on Saturday. But listen to me, you just won the World Tape Speech Contest. You're the only Sri Lankan to win this. Yeah, only Sri Lankan to win this. Get ready, get ready to fly to the USA. Now, first time on a plane. I had heard back in college when we were young, 
that as you go to first class, the air hostesses get naked. Now I'm looking. Man, not happening on this plane. The air hostess comes up to me and says, Sir, can I give you some peanuts? And so I ask, is it for free? And she says, yes, it's for free. Then give me three. <laughs> I get down on the USA and I was taken to Hilton, sweet champagne. Um, I go down to the bar to get a glass of water because I was on a budget. And every time you break a bottle at Hilton, that's five dollars. So I go down to the bar to get a glass of water and I ask the barman, can I have a glass of water? The barman asks me, do you want flat water or sparkling water? I'm like, where I come from, there's only one type of water. <laughs> Just to tell you how naive I was back in the day, I came back that year. Um, I, I, in the same conference, I, uh, I'm, I'm called on stage, President's Dinner Dance, and awarded the title in front of 3,000 people. And, and you know, the dinner dances in the US are fantastic. The only contingent that was not dancing was the Sri Lankan contingent because there was no baila. But I suddenly remembered I knew how to dance. Dancers have this amazing thing. They could look around the floor and pick another dancer. I looked around and my eyes fell on the Chinese contingent. There was a Chinese girl looking at me, looking at her. I went up to her, I give her my hand and then we started waltzing the entire night. When I stopped, there was a whole queue. There was a whole queue of women waiting to dance with me. I'm the only Sri Lankan, I'm the only Sri Lankan to dance with a woman from each continent in one night. <laughs> you know, I come back a changed man. I come back a changed man. I had, I had discovered my power and through the people I associated, they were able to channel my power into something useful. Ladies and gentlemen, you all have power, but power is useless without an aim, without a proper purpose. Sometimes we can't discover that talent within us, but sometimes the people around us, they can help us find that talent, find that power. Because when I look at you, I see something in you, but I don't know what it is. Maybe, maybe the people in your life, the people you associate, maybe they can help you find that power and channel it to something great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.